Hi, my name is Collie Ennis and I'm a research associate with the zoology department in Trinity College and I'm here today to talk to you about the false widow spire which is making uh, the rounds in the news as it does at this time of the year every year. So the false widow spider, the noble false widow spider as it's known, is this beautiful species here. Not originally from Ireland, it has arrived on our shores from the Canary Islands, first recorded here in the 90s. It's possibly the only spider in the country that has a bite that can really affect people. You can see they're quite active in this heat. And you can see, even though I'm handling it, it's not biting. The bite of this spider is medically significant, as in, if you were to get bitten, you will possibly feel pain. You might even get an infection and have to visit the hospital. But the spiders aren't going out of their way to bite you. The reason why they bite is because pressure is put on their bodies. When pressure is put on their bodies, as in if they're in a pair of trousers or a jacket you're putting on and you squeeze them, they will bite. It's only a defense mechanism and they're not going out of their way to do that to you. So what do noble false widows look like? Well, this is a classic example. This has the skull-like pattern on the abdomen, very red legs, and it's quite shiny. Um, they do get a lot bigger than this. Here's an example here of a female that unfortunately died when she fell out of our web when I caught her. But you can see the quite bulbous body. She's full of eggs, and these are the egg sacs that they will lay. So there's a good general description of them. There is variation in what they look like. They can be darker and lighter depending on where they're, they're hiding out in your house or in uh, the wild in Ireland. So the question that I'm most asked about is what do you do if you find false widows in your house? Well, the best thing to do if you are afraid is just to get rid of them. And the most humane way of getting rid of them is to just pick one up in a jar like I'm doing here or a cup, pop a lid on it and bring them outside. It's very easy to do. You can do it with your cup and a bit of paper or you can do it with a small jar, a jam jar you can all do and they'll do well outside and it's very humane. If they don't do well, they provide food to the birds and the frogs that will eat them. Also, the important thing is a lot of our native spiders who are essential to our food webs are getting mistaken as the false widows and killed in the process. So the best thing to do is to pick up the spider in a jar and pop it outside. We have a couple of species of spider that really like to live in our houses and hang around with us and they are often mistaken for false widow spiders or mistaken for being dangerous. So we're just going to show you what they are here. Now the, the number one spider that people will see around the house, oddly enough, is called the giant European house spider. And this is one of them here. Now they're quite fast, so please excuse if he does a little bit of a run. Now they look very scary, kind of like our Irish tarantulas, but they're absolutely harmless. You see them a lot in your bathtub because when the males are out looking for female mates, they will fall in and they won't be able to get up because of the slippy surface. They look terrifying, but again, harmless and actually quite useful around the house because they remove wood lice and flies and all the stuff that we don't really want in our kitchens and behind our sink. And this is where these guys specialize. Very, very helpful little chaps. So again, if you want to remove one, just pop something on them and then slide a bit of paper underneath. The other spider that we see a lot in the house is the cellar spider. You can see here it's got these spindly legs and I think a common name for it has been the daddy long leg spider. There was a rumor that went around a few years ago that these were one of the most venomous spiders on the planet but because their fangs were too small they couldn't penetrate human skin and therefore we weren't going to be killed by them. The rumour started in Australia when one of these was recorded uh, eating a redback spider, which is an incredibly venomous spider from Australia. What, what they didn't know was, and what most arachnologists would know, is that these are spider killing specialists. So if you want less spiders in your house, you're better off keeping these. And what was happening in that photograph was, this spider here was basically using spider jujitsu with its long spindly legs throwing webs over the venomous uh, redback and 
entangling it and then eating it. This is what it does with giant house spiders and even with the false widow spiders. They are incredible at predating on other spiders. So useful little guys to have around the house. And again, absolutely harmless.